So here's a full frame look at the bathroom. Our design is a wet bath design and we've changed the overall design a few times and I'll kind of go over that. But right now we just have a wall and inside there is the rest of the wet bath. This wall has the switch for the bathroom light and the switch for the electric ball valve that will be on the gray water tank underneath the shower so the wires are just kind of hanging and then we're just gonna hang art and whatever right here make it you know cute but here's the bathroom and this red stuff is called red guard it's a waterproof membrane I don't have the container with me but if you look at the seams you'll see this is the red guard tape that it comes with it's not really tape it's just like this felt material and it goes on all the cracks to help seal those in and we did this as an extra precaution because we are going to be using FRP board that you see right here. Initially this was supposed to be a wet bath with a DIY composting toilet. There's some great YouTube channels with people doing this and it makes sense if you are just having a toilet and not a shower in a toilet or if you have a larger um, rig like a schoolie or an RV where you can put a composting toilet separate from the shower because a composting toilet is supposed to be moisture free that's why they install the fans so that you are drying out the compost material and not getting it wet so after rethinking that I'm like well even if I make like a waterproof sealed container here there is still potential for there to be leaks or just to be more moist in here and I didn't think that was a good idea plus when you have such a small space, I didn't want to make a permanent box that would be a lot harder to get rid of if it didn't work out versus putting some sort of on the market toilet so they can just kind of plug and play, like put the toilet anywhere. We went with a Dometic portable toilet and we are going to try to just do number one in the van and that's kind of what we decided to do. I know for some people they want the option to go both and composting toilets are great. They're just really expensive. They're like a thousand dollars for a plastic bucket crap in. That just seemed ridiculous. So the Dometic was 100 but out of all the portable toilets this one was highly recommended and has some features that I like. I have taped all around the corners and I think I'm gonna work this piece and then kind of go that way hoping that I don't get the FRP glue all over everything if I kind of work my way that way. So that's the plan. Let's do it. FRP, in terms of what it does, is great. Getting it on is a pain in the butt. It, it kind of got everywhere, and it's probably not as noticeable as I'm making it out to be, but I mean, you can see it all up there. Like, it's in the middle, and then I was scrubbing it with a sponge, a toothbrush, just whatever I could, and it wasn't coming off. It was just drying really fast, and I was doing it within minutes, so like, there. It even got on the tub bottom and once it starts drying it's it's like cement you can't get it off so i'm a little i'm a little frustrated with that because these were expensive it is what it is it's late and i'm about to break something because i'm so frustrated <sighs> okay so i'm ending it here i didn't get the top piece in or those two little pieces but um everything else is in i mean it does look good i'm not gonna lie minus the gaps which we'll get taken care of but I mean I'm I'm really happy with it and I'll show you guys again in the morning because I'm gonna be working on this again tomorrow so okay good night good morning um it is the next day and this stuff reeks which is why I'm wearing a mask I was wearing a mask last night when I was doing the um the gluing but I mean the FRP board itself is giving off a very strong smell which I was told it would be it's very intense so I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the daylight and things that I'm going to have to fix and uh, yeah let's get into it it's not as bad as I thought like you probably can't even tell okay so up there you can probably tell on this wall it's kind of like all in this area it's 
it's not as noticeable as I was thinking it was. No, oh, actually there's one right there. Let's see if you can see. Yep, right there. It is something that bothers me. I mean, overall, I mean, you take a step back and it looks great. I did, oh shoot, great. I did scuff up the bottom here. Ugh, I don't know. Ugh, it's not turning out 100% like I wanted it to. Apparently the FRP board has some sort of coating on the outside, which you're not supposed to just like paint on top of. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna get the ceiling and that piece in, and then I'm probably gonna take a second to research what else I can do. Um, but I mean, this stuff is on, like it is over well, right here. It didn't really adhere, but this stuff is not budging, which is awesome. So it's, it's stuck on there. Good morning. Um, it's been a second since I've picked up the camera and I want to show you what I've done and the mistakes that I've made so far. I gotta take you outside. Hold on. I was able to get the gray tank mounted for the shower, which I'm really excited about, but, oops, um, I messed up and I'm gonna show you how I did that. We have the electric ball valve um, on. I had to screw that on first and then mount the tank because of the tight position. So here's where I messed up. I'll show you. So this, this ball valve, this is the wire. It is a three wire ball valve. You can see the yellow, the red, and the blue um, baby wires. And I did not account for that because I was reusing this wire that I ran for the old compost toilet idea down here thinking that, oh, I could just hook it up to the switch inside. And that doesn't work because this needs a three wire toggle switch, which is not what's over there. So I was able to open this last night and then that's it. It's not the biggest deal. I just can't use this wire. I'm gonna have to run a different wire here probably to the back um, where the water tank is. But now I have this extra wire and I think what I'm gonna try to do is maybe pull it back up and use it in the closet. I just hate wasting things, so that's where I messed up. I've made a lot of mistakes in this build and I'm going to keep making mistakes because I'm not a professional, I'm a DIYer and I have to be electrician, I have to be plumber, carpenter, a lot of things and it's hard to account for everything so I'm gonna make mistakes, you're gonna make mistakes, um, just know it's gonna happen and there are ways to fix it. It's just another step that you have to take. So let me show you the button switch situation. So this is the 12 volt switch that originally I was going to use for the compost toilet. This one is for the light and then this one was going to be for the ball, the ball valve. I cut a hole big enough for this so I can't really just replace it with a single and I just hate the fact that I would have a dual switch and I can only use it for one. That's going to bother me. So now I'm going to see if I can get that wire. It's it's tucked away in there. I don't mm, I don't know how this is going to work. So I'll report back. I was able to do it. I was able to bring it back up through the bottom and through the closet and I wasn't planning on putting a light in the closet but now I'm going to. It's short, I'm gonna have to attach another piece but I'm probably gonna run it up like that and I might do like a light strip bar. I think that might be the easiest way of installing something so we'll see. So I thought I should stop and show you what I'm doing. Hold on. From where I last left you off with the bathroom, I found this tub and tile paint by Rust-Oleum that I'm going to use to cover, you know, all those tan glue uh, spots. So I have my light taped off, the tub, because it's plastic. It says it doesn't work on plastic, so I didn't want to mess that up. This is like the cheapest acrylic um, epoxy paint that I could find, and it's just a two-part formula. So B and then A, the activator. I'm using these roll-on sponges. I have some mixed up. I'm just going to apply it and hopefully that'll cover everything. It says I can do at least two coats with this. So do one coat, wait an hour, do the second coat. So let's do it.
I hope you can hear me. It is really stinky in here. This stuff smells. It's so potent. So I'm going to leave this on, but I'm going to show you how it looks now. First coat, it looks so much better. I feel like it might be hard to see it, but like there was tan, green, gray stuff right here. It's a little streaky, but even so, it looks so much better. Um, in an hour, I'm going to do a second coat. And yeah, I'm very, 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 very happy with how this turned out. The one new thing you'll probably notice is our handles that are in. This is just a standard RV shower handle. Nothing fancy. I really wanted like uh, a normal shower mixer, but the cost of all of that would have been, I want to say close to $200. Uh, they are not cheap. So if you just need something to get the job done, go with the RV style ones. This was like 20 something dollars. So overall, the shower is looking great. You can probably see that I figured out what to do with this piece. This piece was a little bit of a pain, but I ended up building a little platform frame to go around that awkward angle. And then I cut plywood and then I just used a marine adhesive. I didn't do the FRP glue and glued some remainder FRP to it. And then we put that little trim piece there to cover up the seam. We also did the same thing to the bottom where the tub meets that little ledge. So it ended up working out not putting trim in. I just put a tile and grout um, caulk everywhere and it filled the seams pretty well. It darkened up a lot more than I thought it would, but I think that's going to be my only source of filling in the gaps and it did a really good job even on the sides that were thicker i think overall it looks great i think it would just look funny if i try to add any more trim this is good and we're just gonna add the shower handle here and another little surprise good afternoon we are basically almost done with this build and I never actually showed the rest of the bathroom uh, being done. Basically just a few extra accessory pieces and the one thing I haven't put in here is the toilet. It's just stuffed away behind a bunch of other crap inside so you'll see that when we I guess do like a full tour. But yeah we're almost done so you're gonna get some really tight shots of the bathroom because I don't want to give any spoilers to anything else so let me show you what we've done. On this wall we added this accessory piece and this is where our towels will be stored i got this off of amazon for like 30 bucks and i mean i'm putting some weight on it it's it's pretty stiff and it's just supported here and here our thought process with this was towels will hang if we have to hand wash any clothes and it just kind of tucks against the wall like so. I don't foresee it moving. I mean, these things don't really have a lot of give unless you're actually pulling it. So that is one accessory. And here we have the Oxygenix Fury handheld shower head. And this was one of the most highly rated on Amazon. It's a little pricey, it was 60, but this little lever on the back. One thing to note about the shower handle that I had to learn by emailing the company is that, I don't know if it's gonna focus or show it, but there is a tiny, tiny little pinhole at the bottom of this and when I was using the shower this would start to drip out as soon as I, sh I shut the water off and it would just drip 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 really fast and I thought there was something wrong with it but no it's basically like a, a pressure relief valve and you might think that you have a leak but you don't and here is our toilet paper holder it's a Dometic toilet paper holder and it's supposed to keep your paper waterproof you know this comes out and you can put it like so. And we installed it here. Oop. Sneak peek at the flooring. We installed it here because our toilet's gonna go there and I basically positioned it so it wouldn't be in the way while we were using the toilet. And these actually can be mounted inside the wall so they will be mounted up to there but we didn't have a cavity deep enough it's about three inches i think you should account for four it's in the instructions when you buy it there wasn't really any online that i had to figure out so give it about four inches of cavity space and you could install this in the wall but i mean it works outside of the wall and you can mount it both ways they give you the option like we did here and it's 
it's on there pretty tight. So that was a cool little nifty accessory we put in. And I think I showed the light working before, but there you go, one light. I think that's plenty in here. Kind of give you a full frame look without giving too much away of the rest of the vehicle. That is the bathroom and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative and I guess we'll catch you in the next one.